This time I'm playing in the Risk 1v1 tournament matches against the top Grandmaster Vikidix. The link to his channel will be in the description. You get 1 point by winning going first, 2 points by winning going second. And the first 5 matches will be United States with World Domination, while the other 5 Classic with Capital Conquest. This is how our territory setup looked at the end and I considered my setup to be amazing because I had multiple good different places to add my army to. And at the end I decided to put my army into the territory of Louisiana, while my opponent decided to do the troop split adding his equally split armies in the territories of Washington and Colorado. So what he did is captured the closest territories and then fortifying his biggest army on Montana tried to guard the Pacific coast. So with that my plan was to invade him and take over the Pacific coast myself. But before that I needed to know how many territories I need to capture so I wouldn't potentially end up like only one territory short to bringing him to the next lower territorial troop bonus. And I counted that along with invading him into the region of Heartland I will bring him down to the 17 territories, so I didn't need to capture any extra territory. Getting to my opponent's biggest army I've got a very good attacker's advantage of losing even 8 troops fewer, and with that along with me taking over the Pacific coast and still having an army of 4 troops left to guard it, the game was over for my opponent. I win and the result becomes 2-0 with me being in the lead. This is how our territory setup looked in the second game and I considered my territory setup to be very well again. As this time as the first player I didn't really leave any good spots for my opponent to add his army to. Obviously any other than these Pacific Coast territories, so that was very obvious for me that most likely add his army to one of these territories. And this is why I went with this plan. So just a small inaccuracy for me was to not add my army into the territory of Oregon instead of Idaho as the territory of Oregon was bordering with all three of my opponent's territories, so since my opponent added his army into California I needed to capture one extra territory before getting to his army. But my luck was terrible and despite correctly predicting my opponent's army, I didn't get any attacker's advantage at all, losing the same number of troops as him. So was very unfortunate for me. Though what my opponent in his video suggested is that it might have been a good idea before crushing his biggest army is trying to capture the territory of Washington using one troop manual rolls. And that probably been a good idea because it would have forced my opponent to invade that region with me capturing it. But since with me not doing that, he was able to focus on capturing two other regions next to which I didn't have any extra troops so with that I could potentially be able to fail invading at least one of them. But I was lucky and managed to break through both of them. And here my opponent brought me down to 17 territories, with a long of having an army of 3 troops left. While in my turn I only brought him down to 19, so he started to receiving one more troop than me and taking the lead. As in the next turn I was brought down to even 3 extra territories, to 14 of them. With that the game became over for me. And after the two games the result becomes 2-2 with us being an A draw. This is how our territories looked at the third game. And this time my territory setup as the second layer wasn't as good if comparing with the first game as a lot of them were connected with each other, but even with that there was still a good cut off place, and I'm talking about these territories. So this is why I decided to put my army there even though it was an obvious choice. My opponent did the troop split again and with one of the armies he captured as many territories as possible and with another one manual rolled my biggest army. But luckily for me his manual rolls weren't too good for him, and he lost two troops more than me on them. And when my turn came I was thinking whether I should add my all newly gotten troops to my biggest army or do the troops split and capture the two territories behind me on the right, but I remembered that wanting to maximize the number of territories you want to capture is better to avoid doing the troop splits, so this is why I added all newly gotten troops to the biggest army. And then going through his territories I've got the two troops advantage when crushing his three troops army, and then losing no troops while crushing his another three troops army. 
and at the end I managed to capture even three different continents. I was running out of time so I had to make my decision where to fortify my two troops quickly and with that I made a mistake. The best territory for me to put these two troops to would have probably been Arizona or California. My opponent disconnected in his turn, but even with him successfully invading all of the continents that was pretty obvious that I was in a big advantage and would have won anyway. The result after three games becomes 4-2 with me getting back to the lead. This is how our territory setup looked in the fourth game. And basically there were two good obvious spots for my opponent to add his army to. So I considered placing my army between there, and there. And I actually predicted right. But once again I've got the worst luck ever by not getting the attacker's advantage at all. I lost the same number of troops as my opponent. This was a weird fortification choice of mine and I think I should rather fortify that three troops army in one of the mid-Atlantic region territories. But I didn't want my opponent to get the attacker's advantage if placing his troops into one army so I don't know. Anyway, as you saw my opponent decided to capture these continents bringing me down to 17 territories, and I invaded them both bringing my opponent down to the 17 territories as well. My opponent then brought me to 19 territories, while in my turn him to 15 territories. Then I ended up with 20 territories with 4 turn coming, and bring down my opponent to 15 territories again, so just with this time saving an army of 3 extra troops. In 5th turn I traded in a set at 4 cards and brought my opponent down to 10 territories. I could have brought to even fewer but as you see got unlucky to lose 3 troops while crushing my opponent's army of 2 troops. And my opponent with him trading in a set brought me down to 18 territories losing no troops while crushing my 2 armies of 2s. Unfortunate thing was that he captured 2 continents. So thinking that my opponent could have fortified his 2 army on the territory of Oregon while he actually fortified them to the territory of Arizona. So actually that was a bad troop split for me, and I should have done 5 instead of 6 on the left side and 3 instead of 2 on the right side. So anyway as you can see I failed to invade the right side continent and with that my opponent took over the advantage winning the game, so that was unfortunate for me but I gotta admit that was well played by my opponent. The result becomes 4-2-4 with us being in the draw again. This is how our territory setup looked in the fifth game, and the obvious army placement choice for me was the territory of Kentucky as it had the access to all of my opponent's territories where he could have put his biggest army to, as with him either putting his army to California or South New England he would just end up getting his whole army blocked. So probably this is why he actually decided to do the troop split in three armies. I crushed my opponent's biggest army getting a good attacker's advantage of 5 troops, and then with my split troops I captured some more territories bringing my opponent down to 11 of them. He then was lucky to invade me into all of my continents. But despite that with me having that army of 8 troops left and continuing attacking territories, I took the territory's lead. And with my opponent failing to invade me into my continents, I took over the unstoppable advantage and won. After 5 games the result becomes 5-4 with me being in the lead after us ending the USA games. This is the first Classic Caps game or the 6th game in overall. And I wasn't picking any obvious capital spots because I wanted that my plan wouldn't be clear from my opponent as I thought with me selecting one of the obvious capital places for the second layer my opponent would have made it blocked with the territory picks. So anyway as you saw my opponent decided to place his army on Siam while I in New Guinea, so to counter my opponent not letting him get and hold Australia. My opponent got the attacker's advantage of two troops while crushing my secondary army and then just continued capturing as many territories as possible bringing me down to 14 territories. While in my turn brought Hein down to only 19 territories so he was an advantage as he was supposed to be in those settings who are really favoring the first player. And then my opponent brought me down to the 14 territories again, while I him to 20, or 1 territory fewer than the last turn. So with my opponent bringing me down to 15 territories in the third round and with me being in an absolutely disadvantageous situation, 
I knew that my best chance is to win by capital's blitz rule. So I added all of my troops to my capital army, and since the success chance was 29% I decided to do manual rolls which were very successful bringing the winning chance to even 78% but unfortunately I still lost. And after the 6 games the result becomes 5 to 5 with us being an A tie. This is the 7th game and this time as the second layer I went for the Middle East capital. My opponent didn't get the attacker's advantage in Australia, losing even 2 more troops than me. But at the end he brought me to 12 territories with 8 troops being left on his capital. While I despite attacking as much as possible only to 15 territories with only 5 troops left on my capital. My opponent then brought me down to 18 territories which led me receive 8 troops combined with the capital bonus, and I decided to immediately blitz my opponent's capital despite it being round 2, as when the capital blitzing chances are high you're supposed to lose around the same amount of troops from that I could tell of my experience. But despite the blitz roll being 86% I still lost it. And after the 7 games, the result becomes 5 to 6 with my opponent now taking over the lead. This is the 8th game. And this time I was considering among 3 different capital spots. New Guinea, Venezuela and Western Europe. But with the troops reveal the latter one wasn't the option anymore as then my opponent would have immediately blitzed that capital having a lot of troops near. So I considered between New Guinea and Venezuela. And after all decided to go with New Guinea. My opponent with capturing a bunch of territories left his capital relatively weak and since I have even 85% chance to blitz it, I decided to go for it. And this time my plan worked out, I won it losing the same amount of troops. So then after invading South America I tried properly guarding both of my capitals. While my opponent's plan was just to try capturing as many territories as possible, so in the round 3 with getting a bigger bonus he would potentially be able to retake one of the capitals. But unfortunately in the round 2 I made a mistake by capturing South America, going with this strategy my plan should have been to focus on leaving my capitals as strong as possible with avoiding to over capturing territories. So you can see what went next. My opponent got a very good blitz roll crushing my weaker capital losing even 3 troops fewer. So with that I knew the game was over for me so unless I will somehow get good manual rolls but I didn't, and the result after 8 games becomes 5 to 7 with my opponent continuing being in the lead. In the 9th game our 4th classic capitals game in a row I went the second once again which was unfortunate but on the other hand with my opponent being 2 points in the lead and only 2 games left. It gave me the chance to potentially make a comeback and win the series rather than to draw at best. And in the previous games noticing that my opponent actually doesn't block my way towards and out of Australia, I decided to go with Siam which is a very good capital territory because with successfully holding Australia you're guaranteed getting two extra troops. So this time I was just completely blocked from Africa and both of the Americas. So when it came to invading my opponent into South America and Africa, I had to rely on my newly gotten troops and fortunately I successfully invaded my opponent into both of his continents. Then capturing Australia for myself, and then Europe for extra territories. In my second turn I received even 10 troops and was in a very big advantage. So actually I was really regretting that I didn't go with the Siam or Indonesia capital strategy in my previous games. So anyway, basically I continued getting the advantage, and then in the fourth round trading in a set at three cards I've got 100% chance to blitz my opponent's capital, so I took it and won. The result after nine games becomes 7-7 seven to seven and now it's up the last game to decide the faith of the series. And it is the tenth final game or the fifth classic capital conquest game in which I finally went first. I decided to go with the Siam strategy putting my whole army on it. While my opponent decided to do the troop split putting his troops on Indonesia and Western United States territory. And he selected his capital to be on Indonesia which was a pretty big mistake because I had even 93% chance to blitz his capital, and after that capturing Australia get a guaranteed troop bonus with only one capital to guard. 
so with getting a good capital blitz roll and successfully invading my opponent into South America it led me immediately take over a big advantage. And with the third round coming my opponent had nothing better to do but just manual roll my capital as otherwise the game would have been over for him. And very unluckily for me he was getting amazingly good manual rolls, and actually almost got one of my capitals, but I was prepared for my opponent getting extremely lucky to take my first capital so this is why I added additional 3 troops on my secondary capital, so even if my opponent successfully blitzed the first, he still wouldn't be able to get the second one so easily, and then I would have just recaptured the main capital. Anyway with me winning the last game I win the series with the result becoming 8-7. to The luck was very tough for me in the whole series but despite that I still managed to make an amazing comeback.